We're going to talk about redox reactions. This is from chapter 4 and this is video 4.9. A redox reaction is a reaction in which one or more electrons are transferred from one thing to another. There are a couple of definitions of redox reactions uh, are of oxidation and reduction. There's an old and then there's a more modern definition of it. In the old definition it was considered the gain of oxygen and here it was the loss of oxygen. And we look at it differently now. What we're looking at um, in a modern definition is a loss or gain of electrons. So when it comes to oxidation, this is the loss of electrons and this is the gain of electrons. And this can be kind of tricky because we would think that with reduction we would lose something, but it was based, the name was based on the loss of oxygen rather than the gain of electrons. So these definitions are the most important. Um, oxidation reductions always involve a transfer of electrons. We get redox from here, the OX from oxidation and RED from reduction. And here's a little acronym. The loss of electrons is oxidation, which is where we get LEO, and the gain of electrons is reduction, which is where we get GER. It's a convenient acronym to remember. Um, we have half reactions, one for the substance that's reduced and one for the substance that's oxidized and they occur simultaneously in a chemical reaction. And we can understand if something is a redox reaction by looking at something called oxidation numbers. Here's an example of a redox reaction. Here we have sodium metal um, and it's reacting with chlorine gas. This is the reaction. It's pretty violent. It gives off heat and light. And it forms sodium chloride, which is table salt. And this is a redox reaction where um, sodium and chlorine have a transfer of electrons. In order to understand if something is oxidation or reduction, you have to look at the oxidation number. So this is what we'll look at first. Um, sodium by itself has an oxidation number of zero. You write the oxidation state or the oxidation number above the element. Chlorine has an oxidation number of zero. And if we see something like um, ozone, O3, that also has an oxidation number of zero. Now if these things are charged, if we have sodium metal or chlorine, I'm sorry, uh, sodium ion, chlorine ion, or oxide ion, then the oxidation number is the same as the charge. So this would be positive one, negative one, and negative two to match. Notice that on oxygen, for example, I have a negative 2 for the charge and a negative 2 for the oxidation number. The charge I write the number and then the sign. The oxidation state I write the sign and then the number. All right, if we have a compound like water, or if we have um, sodium chloride, we would assign the numbers um, to the more electronegative element first, which the more electronegative element is going to be the top right corner on the periodic table and that would be this one. So oxygen um, when it's an ion has an oxidation state of negative 2 and then this would be negative 1. Fluorine is always um, negative 1 when it's in a compound or if it's a monatomic ion. Here's an example of fluorine in a compound NAF. In this case it's negative 1. Oxygen is normally negative 2 like in the case of water that we saw. Another example would be um, Li2O. Oxygen is negative 2 here. But if it's with fluorine, it would form OF2. Fluorine would have to be a negative 1. And in this case, oxygen is positive 2. Another exception is in something called a peroxide. H2O2 is a peroxide. And here it's a negative 1. And then um, hydrogen is actually positive, positive 1. Um, the elements from group 1 are positive 1, the elements from group 2 are positive 2, and aluminum is a positive 3. So examples of this might be um, lithium, which is um, positive 1. I'll write it above there. Um, another example would be magnesium. If the oxidation state is positive 2, then this is positive 2, and aluminum. All right, hydrogen is almost always positive one unless it's with a metal. So typically it is positive one, like 
um, HCl, this is positive 1 and this is negative 1. And if it is with a metal, like nickel hydride, um, this would be a positive 1. I'm sorry, a negative 1. That's a mistake. Negative 1. This would have to be a positive 1 in this case. All right. And then the last example, or the last two examples, polyatomic ions. So here's an example of a polyatomic ion, carbonate. Or um, perhaps we could have ammonium. When you sum up the oxidation numbers of these elements, carbon and oxygen, or nitrogen and hydrogen, um, the oxidation numbers should sum up to the charge in the ion. And the last rule is that the sum of the oxidation numbers of all atoms in a neutral compound is zero. So I'm going to go back and look at these examples I haven't finished yet. So here at the top in rule number three I have water. If oxygen is negative two, then hydrogen must be a positive one. Positive one times two is positive two, plus a negative two would cancel out to be neutral. In this example, sodium would have to be positive one also to cancel out the negative one for chlorine. In sodium fluoride, sodium would still be a positive one. In this example, we have lithium with oxygen. Oxygen is negative two each, so this is a positive one. And as we move down here, looking at now carbonate. I'm going to change the color of my pen so it stands out a little bit better. I'll use blue. So oxygen has got to be a negative two according to rule number five where we talk about oxygen, it's a negative two times three, which would be negative six. So carbon must be a positive four. Positive four plus negative six equals negative two. Now looking at this example, hydrogen is the one that we wanna look at first. Hydrogen is gonna be a positive one, and that's according to rule, let's see, rule number seven, we talk about hydrogen here. And that means it has to be positive one overall, so nitrogen must be a negative three. All right, so here are some rules about assigning oxidation numbers. You want to keep these rules in front of you as you do these next examples. Okay, we want to find the oxidation states of each of the following compounds. The easiest kinds of examples are ones where it has only two elements. I'm looking at this one right here with manganese and oxygen. Oxygen's a negative two, and there are two of them, so that gives us a negative four overall. So this must be a positive four to cancel it out. Moving over to PCl5, chlorine is a negative 1, and phosphorus here must be positive 5. Positive 5 and negative 5 cancel out. Fluorine is always negative 1 in a compound, and so this must be positive 4. So there are several examples. Now looking at carbonate straight above it, negative 2, that would give us a negative 6 overall. We want to add that to whatever the number is on carbon, I'm going to call that x. x plus negative 6 equals negative 2, which is that charge from the ion. So this must be a positive 4 to give us a negative 2 overall. Now this example, we know that we have oxygen, which is going to be negative 2, and we have potassium, which is a 1a metal, so it's positive 1. So here we have um, positive 1 times 2 is positive 2, we have two chromiums, um, I'm going to call the charge of chromium X, and we have seven oxygens which have a charge of negative two each, so it's negative 14, and the whole thing has to equal zero. So if we think about this, uh, if we simplify it, 2X um, plus negative 12 equals zero, so 2X equals 12. So X must be a six, so that the whole compound is neutral overall. So again, a redox reaction would always have a transfer of electrons, and the transfer may occur to form ions. When we have oxidation, we're going to have an increase in the oxidation state or the oxidation number, um, and the element that is oxidized is called the reducing agent, so it's a good thing to remember. Reduction has a decrease in the oxidation state or the oxidation number. It has a gain of electrons and it's the oxidizing agent. Remember that oxidation is the loss of electrons is oxidation. The gain of electrons is reduction. That's an easy way to remember it. 
Okay, so which of these are redox reactions? We're going to look for changes. The oxidation number here is 0, so it's negative 1 and positive 1. Negative 1 and positive 2, positive 2 and negative 2 cancel out, and this is a 0. So we're looking for changes. Zinc starts as a 0 and it goes to a positive 2. So we draw these tie lines in, and zinc is going up by 2. If the oxidation number goes up, it is being oxidized. Next, we look at hydrogen. Hydrogen goes from a negative, um, or I'm sorry, positive 1 to a 0. So it's going down by 1, so it's being reduced. And this is a redox reaction. Okay, looking at the numbers here, this is negative 2. Negative 2 times 7 is negative 14. Um, 2 times a positive 6 would be positive 12. Positive 12 and negative 14 equal negative 2. All right, oxygen's in negative 2. This must be positive 1 to give us a negative 1 overall. Again, oxygen is a negative 2. And chromium must be a positive 6 so that the overall charge is negative 2. This would be negative 8, positive 6, which would give us negative 2 overall. This is negative 2 and positive 1. So we're looking for changes. Chromium goes from a 6, stays a 6. Oxygen is negative 2 throughout. And hydrogen is positive 1 throughout. This is not redox. So it's a non-redox reaction. There are no changes in oxidation numbers. All right, the last example, this is a negative 1 and a positive 1. Negative 1, this must be a positive 2 now because there's two chlorines, which is negative 2 and a positive 2 cancel out. And copper is a 0. All right, I'll raise, or get rid of these numbers here. So copper goes from a positive 1 to a positive 2, so it's being oxidized, it's going up by 1. And copper, in another example, is going from a uh, positive 1 to a 0, so it's going down by 1, so it's also being reduced. And that's fine. It can be both oxidized and reduced as long as we have more than one atom, which in this case, there are two atoms of chlorine, or copper. One is being oxidized and one is being reduced. So this is redox. Um, this middle reaction B is not redox, but the last reaction is redox. I hope that makes sense for you today. Let me know if you have questions. Oh, I just realized. Identify the oxidizing agent. That oxidizing agent contains the element that is reduced, and the reducing agent contains the element that is oxidized. All right, so we'll identify those substances. So in this case, I'm going to change my pen. So the reduced element is the oxidizing agent. So the reduced element here, hydrogen was reduced, so this is the oxidizing agent. Okay, the element that was reduced in part C was copper, so this is the oxidizing agent as well. Now the element that was oxidized is the reducing agent reducing agent. The element that was oxidized here is zinc, so this is a reducing agent. The element that was um, oxidized is here also copper, so this is also the reducing agent. So this compound is both the reducing agent and the oxidizing agent, and that's okay. Alright, that's it.